Good morning. It's Thursday, June 8th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Devouring the Sheep, and our scripture is 2 Peter chapter 2, where the big fisherman writes, These people are as useless as dried up springs, or as mist blown away by the wind. They are doomed to blackest darkness. They brag about themselves with empty foolish boasting. With an appeal to twisted sexual desires, they lure back into sin those who have barely escaped from a lifestyle of deception. They promise freedom, but they themselves are slaves of sin and corruption. For you are a slave to whatever controls you. And when people escape from the wickedness of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and then get tangled up and enslaved by sin again, they are worse off than before. It would be better if they had never known the way to righteousness than to know it and then reject the command they were given to live a holy life. They prove the truth of this proverb, a dog returns to its vomit. And another says, a washed pig returns to the mud. The backstory on this part of Peter's letter is the Apostle's warning about leading people away from God and into a twisted lifestyle of sin. It's proclaiming sin as holy, and it's the upside-down version of what God desires for each of us. Peter calls this kind of leader useless. Slaves to their own sin, they lead others astray. The metaphors, dog and pig, are always surrounded by filth. Dogs cannot ignore what has come up from inside them, and pigs are hopelessly drawn to the mire. A troublesome reality of the church's marching order is Jesus' command to love. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't disagree with the Lord. I'm just saying that we mess up what he's saying about love. Loving is not simply embracing everything and everybody. If a person is a serial killer, we can love them. Embracing their lifestyle is altogether a different matter. Preacher, just where did you come up with that notion? Well, the seeming dichotomy of loving people but rejecting their lifestyle is the example of God himself. In many passages of Scripture, we learn that God is the very essence of love. Jesus proved that God so loved everyone, he gave his life on Calvary's cross. On the flip side of that are the many passages pointing to how this loving God will bring judgment for lifestyles that reject him. Listen to how another apostle, Paul, describes God's judgment for those who say they love God, but choose to prove just the opposite with their actions, their lifestyle of perversion. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or who are abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Leadership Bishops and a predominance of clergy of the tribe in which I have served the past 18 years, United Methodists, have moved closer and closer to accepting homosexuality as a valid lifestyle. It is proclaimed as loving. In practice, however, it is elevating perverted sexual desire over self-discipline and honoring God's command. Those who do so are quote-unquote loving, neither the churches they are leading into disaster nor the ones who practice their sinful ways. They are merely heaping up judgment on their own heads. For you today, here's a question for those second-guessing a church now in full-blown division and schism. The question is this, Is it a right decision to stay, quote-unquote, united and, without words, affirm a sinful lifestyle in rebellion to God's way, or is it better to stand with God's word and separate? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.